The congregation will now rise and sing hymn 264. <laughs> Please? 84, that's a nice tune. 106, you always like that. Tell you what, two verses of 46 and then you can go home. One verse? Will somebody please sing something? You haven't been here before, have you? No. Fine. Uh, my name's Dr. Gilbert. How do you do? My name's Gibbon Postia. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> uh, this is all right. Um, now, are you a bedwetter? I'm sorry. Uh, are you a bedwetter? Well, not since I was. Right. Well, you sit on the chair, I'll lie on the couch. Are you safe than sorry? Now, um, are you under the impression that you're Kenneth Wollstonehome? <laughs> sorry. Do you think that you're Kenneth Wollstonehome? No, of course not. Good. Because I've got five of them already, and it's getting a bit, uh, a bit tricky keeping their appointments apart, coming in here in their dirty Mac, shouting irrelevant information. Why Kenneth wants to know? That's what I want to know. Still, if you're around the twist. Now, um. <laughs> name. Gibbon Posture. <laughs> Possible. Looney. <laughs> Um, I want you to, uh, to tell me anything on your mind, any little problems, it doesn't matter how personal. Okay. And I want you to feel absolutely at your ease while you're here, because, of course, anything you say to me will be in the strictest confidence. Oh, I must tell you about the bloke who was in here this morning. <laughs> um, what's his name? Tony Sullivan. He works in the back round the corner. You must know. He spent his lunch hour up in that cupboard, you know. Said the swans were after him. Oh, dear. He looked a right pothouse. Yeah, I got some photographs of him. These will make you laugh. Oh, no. Wait a moment. I left them at the golf club. Never mind. Um... <laughs> Where was I? Strictest confidence. Oh, yeah, yeah, and all that. Right, well, what are the problems, then? Well, it's rather embarrassing to say, really. Mm -hmm. I don't like to tell people because I'm frightened of them laughing at me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know quite how to put it, but... Good sometimes Lord, I... is that the time? <laughs> no, go on, go on, go on. Well, it's just that sometimes I get this feeling that comes on. <laughs> but I get this... I don't know... Shh! <laughs> I'm sorry, what were you saying? Well, Try to relax. Straight. I, I am trying to. Um, well, it's, it's, it's happened... Go on, go on, go on. Well, it's happened more recently when I met girls... Yes? From, but... Mr Biddle comes here, sir. He's in a bit of a state. He's wondering if you can see him at six. Certainly not. Tell him to go to hell. So, uh, say so I have a good mind to report him to the police. <laughs> Dirty old man, I can't stand it. <laughs> Rumbling for sympathy. <laughs> He's a damn good thrashing. I'm sorry, I interrupted. Well, I was saying that now I've started to meet girls in the course of my business and at parties and socially, and, well, I, I don't like to tell come them on, to how. Well, it's, it's not a thing you can tell people. Come please. on, come yes, on, spit it out. Well, Stop beating about the bush. Sometimes I think, sometimes oh, I, I, I really... I'll tell you, though, five guinea's an hour they won't tell I'm you. Not, what's the matter? Sorry. You come in here, you won't say what's up, it's all bloody mumble. I can't hear a word you say. You're all tensed up like all the other nuts who come in here. It's not much fun listening to your time a loony dribble eight hours a day, you know. It's all bloody boring for one thing. Oh, my God, it's so boring. So will you please tell me, once and for all, in God's name, what's the matter with you? I think I'm a rabbit. <laughs> You stupid loony, of course you're not a rabbit! I have yourself together! I am a rabbit! Look, look, if you were a rabbit, you'd have great long ears, wouldn't you? They dropped off when I came in! Look, look, you say you're a rabbit once, 
once more and I'll smash your face in. Now, what are you? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a dog. Right, that's better. <laughs> Here's a band. We'll take you from there next week. Oh, <laughs> were born in China. Now for the Indian babies. I wanted to see you about something else. Come on in. Uh, now, you've been doing the tea here for years and years, so it may come as something of a surprise to you uh, to hear that I'm the head of the Secret Service. Uh, no, sir, it's written on the door. Uh, yes, mum's the word. Invisible ink. Stum, say nothing. And uh, now, uh, what I want you to do is that I want you to do me a little favour. Well, what's that, sir? I want you to set fire to the Kremlin. <laughs> well, in Moscow, sir? Uh, unless you know one nearer, yes. <laughs> well, I mean, haven't you got spies for that sort of thing, sir? Ah, um, now, how can I go? How can I answer that? Um, no. No, no we had lots, you see. Uh, but it does seem that they all tend to be just a little bit uh, dead. <laughs> so, uh, of the only man available, I've selected you. Congratulations and well done. Uh, now, burning down the Kremlin, well, you'll need one or two things. Uh, there are the cans of paraffin, and the, uh, the matches are... Uh, well, I'm sure you'll be able to buy matches in Moscow. Well, I've got some matches, sir. What? Surely, good. Well done. You know, I think I picked the right man for the job. A man with matches. Well, jolly good. And out you go then. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, there is one thing, sir. Uh, how do I get there? How do you get there? Yes. Ah, that was an awfully good point. You know, I completely forgot. I miss. Thankfully, sorry. Well, we're going to drop you into Moscow from a plane. By parachute. Uh, no, no, uh, but uh, there'll be a trampoline waiting for you. Possibly. Now, Moscow, Moscow's on the sea. No, no, I beg your pardon, sir, it's not, sir. No. Isn't it? No. Uh, well, let's have a look at this map here. It's a little bit out of date, I'm afraid, but not to worry. And uh, now, you leave from there, uh, you fly over Gaul, and we drop you uh, just north of the Holy Roman Empire. That little place you got there, um, St. Petersburg, which we now call Moscow. See? It was on the sea. Well, out you go then, and jolly good luck. Thank you, sir. Oh, ah, uh, uh, wouldn't I need something like, to, like a forged passport or something, sir? My goodness, you've done it again! A passport, of course. Now, the passport will be in the filing cabinet. Filing cabinet F. Funny, it's not there. Try, try under P, sir. P? P for what? P for passport, sir. Good thinking. <laughs> Funny, there's a rabbit in here. <laughs> Shouldn't be under P. Oh, it's P, Q and R, sir. There it is. <laughs> anyway, it's a hair. I'll put it under H. <laughs> Keep the H on company. Now, well, here's a passport. Name on it is Dmitri Stefanopoulos. Very good enough. It's a Greek passport, sir. Oh, is it? There it is. That's do it. Hang on. Russian <laughs> <laughs> passport. Now, uh, have a look at the photo. Oh, dear. Screw your face up a bit. Three teeth small. Uh, and a scar. Yeah. <laughs> what? Right, well, there you are. Off you go, then. And jolly good. Oh! Almost forgot an armed combat. Do you know anything about it? Well, not really, sir, no. Ah, uh, right. Tompkins! Ah, Tompkins, I want you to show this chap all about an armed combat and show him some of the stuff with the knife. Right. With not. I want you to count me as hard as you can. Go on. And it, you know, come on, really I'm hard, really hard. See if you can get through. I've got to, sir. See if you can get through. Go on. See if you can get through. Go on. Hard as you like. Hard as you like. Is that all right? Absolutely first class. Well done. Fair enough, Tommy. And now, um, equipment. Let's give you some equipment. Now, what have we got here? Oh, yes. Now, do you know what this is? It's a watch, sir. Jolly good. Well done. Do you know how to use one? 
I think so, sir. Even better. Well done. Now, do you know what this is? It's the watch again. <laughs> so it is. <laughs> now, this watch is shockproof. Watch. Knickers! See? No reaction at all. <laughs> I'm going to give you this, what do you say? Thank you. Good. Now, here's a, here's a pen for writing under curry. And here's a plate of curry for you to write under. Oh. And, oh, I'd, uh, I'd better just give you this. Well, what's that for, sir? Luck. Oh. Right, well, off you go then. And jolly good luck. Don't forget the paraffin. Yes, sir. Oh, there is one thing, sir. Yes? What happens if I get killed? If you get killed? Yes, sir. Uh, don't worry. Uh, Mrs Tompkins can make the tea. <laughs> I'm not as cruel as this in real life, you know. Is on our tail. Let's high tail it out of here. If we quit, we can cut across Dead Man's Valley over there, through Cold Corpse Canyon, across Broughton Bone Mountain, through Gallow Creek Gorge, over there to Slaughter Rock. No, let's go the pretty way. I hold it. Everybody has songs they like to sing when they're down in the dumps. I know I have. This is a little song I wrote to chase away old Mr. Blues, and it's dedicated to me. <laughs> I love the lovely Amy MacDonald. I love the lovely Amy MacDonald. I love the lovely Amy MacDonald. Oh, I love the lovely Amy MacDonald. <laughs> All together now, one, two, three. I love the lovely Amy this morning and I'm seeing the governors of the zoo for lunch to discuss by the new tiger and I'm seeing the giraffe keeper at three so I'll see him at half past. Thank you, sir. Oh, and sir, the reptile keeper's outside to see you. Oh, I suppose I'd better see him. All right, bring him in. Yeah, that's that's every time down there. Good. Mind the tail. There we are, sir. Valuable snake. There we are, sir. All right, sir. Right. <laughs> Morning, Dr. Bear. Morning, sir. Sorry, sir. <laughs> it's the fourth time he swallowed you this week, Dr. Bear. I know, sir. And when you're talking to me, take your cap off. Oh, yeah, sorry, sir. <laughs> sorry, sir. Well, how did it happen this time? Usual way, sir. I think he's acquiring a taste for me, sir. <laughs> Look, I'm getting fed up with this lot of him. I don't do it deliberately, sir. I know you. You like loafing around in there. Oh, no, sir, I don't, sir. Gets you out of doing any work, doesn't it? Oh, no, sir, that's not true, Any time you feel like taking an afternoon off, you just pop along to the bird constrictor and climb inside. Oh, no, sir. No, sir. Swallowing me, I think, is a sign of affection, sir. Shut up, lot of him. Well, I'm not letting you get away with it this time. What was that, sir? I'm not letting you get away with it this time! Turn it out, sir! You'll wake him, sir! I'm not having the burr constrictor treated as a restroom! Oh, I'm sorry, sir! Sorry's not enough! It's an expensive business. It costs us 50 pounds every time we operate to get you out. Sir, couldn't you put a zip on it, sir? No. <laughs> or, or buttons, sir? No! Laces? No! Oh, yeah, great! I saw that lot of it. Oh, no, you didn't, sir. I was counting, sir, twice this week. Two times. Right, that's it, lot of it. That's it. I'm going to teach you a lesson. We're not going to operate this time. We're just going to let nature take its course. <laughs> but that'll take years, sir. Good. Oh, oh, it'll be painful for the snake, sir. You should have thought of that before you got in there. Oh, what will I eat, sir? Second-hand mice. Oh, All right, you can come and fetch him now. Go and put him back in the cage. Oh, sir, I'm sorry, sir. I promise I won't do it again. Oh, sir, sorry, sir, sorry, sir. Now, look here, lot of him. Sir. If you behave yourself for a couple of months, I'll let the snake swallow your wife. Oh, thank you, sir. Bless you. Oh, sir. Suppose I'm just an old sentimentalist, really. <laughs> All right. Now, I'll see the hippopotamus keeper now. Yes. Now look here, Simpkins, I'm getting pretty fed up with this. Good evening. I'm appealing to you 
again on behalf of the Make the Lovely Amy MacDonald a Rich Lady Fund. I'm afraid it's bad news. We've had a very poor response so far. Come on, Great Britain, you can do better than that. Do you realise that if each of you sends me just one pound, that'll be enough to keep me in luxury for hours? So don't be a meanie. Give generously to this deserving cause. Next week, I shall be reading out a list of all those who have not yet given. Thank you and good luck. Hello there. Now this is the spot in the show when every week we bring you a new dance. Tonight, it's a new dance called The Chartered Accountant. And here to demonstrate the steps, we have the dancing Chartered Accountant himself, Mr. Arthur S. Stote, ACA. Now, you remember in the early days, we taught you to do the twist like a man stubbing out a cigarette while he dries himself with a towel. And more recently, the shake and the frog, like a man with his feet caught in concrete. Well, tonight, ladies and gentlemen, it's the Chartered Accountant. It's a little more complicated, but roll back your carpets and follow us. Now, the first step. You're a Chartered Accountant, and you're on a tube train. There's a pretty girl standing next to you, but you're embarrassed because everybody is looking at you. So you point to distract their attention. And while they're looking the other way, step two. <laughs> now you repeat that until you get to Liverpool Street. Next movement, you've reached your office and you're using the new adding machine. You take the piece of paper and stick it on the spike. You need some tea, so you clap for the tea lady. Now the telephone rings. You have to answer it. Have you got that? Okay, let's have another look at it. Now your next move, you're a chartered accountant on holiday. You're on a deserted beach in Torquay, and you're taking off your wet bathing trunks. <laughs> Suddenly, you see somebody coming. <laughs> Step 25, you're on a day trip to the Isle of Wight, you're feeling just a little bit seasick, and you're not very sure which rail to go to. And the last move, you're a chartered accountant, it's the end of the financial year, and your books balance. Now it's quite simply back to the first step. You're on the tube train. There we have the chartered accountant. You think you've got it? Well, follow Mr. Stowe as he puts it all together and dances the chartered accountant. <laughs> Our chartered accountants, but you must admit we've got a wonderful natural sense of rhythm. <laughs> As tonight is the final programme in the present series, I would like to take this opportunity to thank all those backroom boys who have helped to make my show such a success, particularly Tim Watsit Taylor. Marty Thingamajig, what's his name, Chapman, and the tall one that needs to shave all the time. I would like to thank them for the way they filled in so well while I changed into my lovely costumes. But there is one person I would clearly like to single out as being the sole cause of the amazing success of the Amy MacDonald show. I would dearly like to tell you her name, but she's so modest that she does not wish to be mentioned. And that person is me. <laughs> Can we have a big hand for me, please? <laughs> really, I don't deserve it at all. Thank you so much. Ah, oh, what a lovely surprise. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Wait a minute, I ordered roses. <laughs> Never mind, see you all again soon. Bye. Bye. Why? Why, 
very passable. Not bad at all. All right. Nothing like a good glass of Chateau de Chasseler. Hey, Dussard. Ah, you're right there, Obadiah. did right. Who'd have thought, 40 years ago, that we'd be sitting here drinking Chateau de Chasselas? I would have been glad of the price of a cup of tea, then. Ah, a cup of cold tea. Aye. Aye. Without milk or sugar. Aye. Or tea. <laughs> and out of a cracked cup at that. Yeah. We never had a cup. We used to drink out of a rolled-up newspaper. <laughs> the best we could manage was to suck on a piece of damp cloth. Uh, but, you know, I often think we were happier then, although we were poor. Because we were poor. Aye. My old dad said to me, he said, money won't bring you happiness, son. He was right. Aye. I was happier then. I had nothing. Aye. We used to live in a tiny, tumble-down old house with great holes in roof. House? You're looking to have a house? We used to live in one room, 26 of us. All there, no furniture, half the floor was missing, and we were all huddled in one corner for fear of falling. <laughs> room? You were lucky to have a room. We used to have to live in corridor. Corridor? Oh, I used to dream of living in a corridor. That would have been a palace to us. <laughs> we used to live in a water tank on rubbish tip. Ah, every morning we'd be woke up by having a load of rotting fish dumped on us. House. Ah. Well, when I said house, I mean to our only hole in ground covered by a couple of foot of torn canvas. But it were house to us. Oh, well, we were evicted from our hole in the ground. We had to go and live in the lake. Hey, hey, you were lucky to have a lake. There are over 150 of us living in a small shoebox in the middle of the road. Cardboard box? Right. Ah, oh, you were lucky. <laughs> we lived for three months in a rolled-up newspaper in a septic tank. Ah. Every morning we'd have to get up at six, clean out rolled-up newspaper, eat a crust of stale bread, then we'd have to work 14 hours at mill, day in, day out, for sixpence a week. Aye, and then we'd, when we'd come home, Dad would thrash us to sleep with his belt. Luxury. <laughs> we used to get up at three, clean the lake, eat a handful of hot gravel, then we'd work in mill for 20 hours for twopence a month, then we'd come home and Dad would beat us about the head and neck with a broken bottle, if we were lucky. Paradise. <laughs> we had it tough. I used to have to get out at shoebox at midnight, lick road clean, eat a couple of bits of cold gravel, work 23 hours a day at mill for a penny every four years, and when we, and when we got home, Dad used to slice us in half with a bread knife. <laughs> Right. <laughs> we used to get up in morning at half past ten at night, half an hour, half an hour before we'd gone to bed, eat a lump of poison, work 29 hours a day at mill for eight year lifetime, come home and each night Dad would strangle us and dance about on our graves. Aye, will you try and tell that to the young people of today? <laughs> will they believe you? No! no.